Okay, let's move on to another interesting story that we read in the papers today about NMA insisting that our politicians undergo psychiatric evaluations before um, running for office. What are your thoughts on this? Um, do you agree? Do you think it's the right thing to do? Or do you think it's a distraction, as many have said, uh, from really the objective of the elections? The elections are, is it about the psychiatric mental stability of our, of our, of our, of our politicians, of our candidates, or is it their ability to do the job? What, what, what are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081 270 You can also tweet to our TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. Uh, BC took the story, um, the papers, and I'd like you to yes. just give us a recap. Yeah. Yes, so uh, Nigerian Medical Association is calling for a psychiatric evaluation of governorship and presidential candidates ahead of the 2023 elections. And the, one of the reasons they want to do this is to ascertain the mental well-being of anyone who wants to take up a leadership position, which I agree is the right thing to do because um, when you are in leadership uh, position, so you take up a leadership position, you are, you are in charge of many people's lives. Many people's lives are in your hands based on the sort of policies you'll be making. You're going to be, you know, laden with responsibility to make laws, to pass uh, policies, to, you know, make rules and regulations and all that. So if your mental uh, state is not balanced, it would affect the way you make these laws. And that will still go down to affect the people who these laws have been made for. So um, it's very important. And I know in this part of the world, we really do not pay uh, much attention to mental health. It's just now that everybody's shouting, mental health, mental health. Even at that, most of us still do not understand um, the whole, the whole, uh, would I say wholeness or the totality of what mental health is about. Mm. Now, if you're going to be in leadership positions, at least that psychiatric test can rule off the very extreme sides of the mental health issue, <coughs> like maybe madness, <coughs> like maybe chronic anger where you throw things, you know, it rules off those extremes. And the little, little ones you can correct with coaching, um, mentorship, and all that. And I believe also that I think they should start looking into this, that every person who holds a leadership position must have a coach, must have a coach that would attend to their well-being in the office. So you finish your conversations, your meetings, somebody is talking to you, t telling you to take that deep breath. Have, your chief of staff should be a coach. In fact, no, all, all chief of staff should go yeah, and yeah, yeah, do all, it all the chief of staff. Yes, exactly. But those of you who are work with the, yeah, the I, principals, I must know, go the responsibility of the chief of staff may be too much if you now add that one. So leave that one. Get a specialist that will be working with the governor. So you want to increase the cost of governance mm -mm. with Grace and another office? No, no, office. no, no, no that's of the psychiatric no, evaluation. No, 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 pick somebody from your chief of staff is usually a person that is almost like a chief that is qualified for a PA. Okay, okay. That's fine. You're there. You're the one that handles everything. That's fine. your job. So go on that NLP training. Yeah, so that chief of staff must have, must be a professional yeah. or an expert yeah. in that field that would help you. Because to govern your home alone, I got home yesterday, uh, I think about <laughs> 9 p.m., and my house was in disarray. Mm. My kids had scattered the bed. Mm. My head was jamming from inside. I was just <laughs> holding myself from shouting because I've told them once to clean my room, lucky these kids have a penchant for messing up my bed they will jump they will play they will scatter papers all over it was it was something that upset me but i just remembered i sat down and i was taking the breath and my daughter was like mommy are you okay i said you people should leave my room now before i open my eye <laughs> just go yeah. i need you know so some of those things we don't see it as uh, issues that we need to take care of but if you are a leader you must have uh, your your mental yeah. health in okay. place so that you can make the right so, let, so you psychiatric as you said as she said there's a spectrum yeah you've seen our leaders um some of them slapping people who slapping extreme and you've, you've seen them um, going crazy when they're in court coming down with bandages you know we've seen all sort of things that we think the drama mm. the the need mm -hmm. to just do something mm. that is very dramatic what are your thoughts do you agree let's start with the, do we agree with it and do you think we should implement this as soon as possible so um I feel that um, mental health, like this is said, and all of us agree on the show that mental health is very important, um, but it is even more important as leaders because every decision that one leader makes can impact the lives of millions of people. So they need to be as stable as possible and they need to be in a resourceful state at all times. Leadership in Nigeria is tough. 
leadership in Nigeria is tough. It's tough. Even when you are managing three people, mm. you're, you're in a team of 12, you're trying to deal with the different characters you are managing. Talk of being a governor, talk of being a Senate president. You're trying to bring quorum among three, 300 people from different parts of the country with different background. Every leader needs to understand that we, we as Nigerians need to understand the kind of problems that our leaders are facing. They try to manage us. Mm. And so I think that this, some people saw it as a spiteful thing that, yes, they should go and check their, their head. They might be mad. You are the one making them mad. Exactly. It, <laughs> is, <laughs> you, it is your wahala. They will tell you don't pass one way. You, you will now pass. jump over the covet. They did small covet. They are breaking small covet to do a higher covet because people would, like, don't cross the road. You will cross the road mm. under the bridge. They now put iron barbed wire there. You will see it. The governor is tired mm. because you are making the governor right. tired. You Honestly. are the making them mad. So let us understand it is not a spiteful thing. It is just to help them yeah, manage become better. more resourceful, be able to deal with the complex challenges that they are facing on a daily basis, leading a country or leading a state within Nigeria. Yes. So me... how do we approach the challenges? I feel that one every governor not just be checking them for psychiatric well-being to be educated to understand how to man understand mm. how to manage stress yeah. how to manage conflicts mm. how to when manage you know. no because when you become a leader you're used to hearing yeses and mm. it might be strange for you to hear no you might be you, you become a leader and you're facing these people that you're supposed to work with that are betraying you emotional intelligence mm. lots of these things need to be discussed right. as a preparation for this position yeah, or like I, a I short course you. within the let, position let me quickly take the mayor's views on this because yeah. i think it's, this is getting a bit more deeper than i thought yeah. Mayor, what are your thoughts on this psychiatric, psychiatric evaluation for everyone psychiatric uh, evaluation for um, candidates for presidency governorship senators whatever appointments drivers should be part of your driving lessons and yeah. driving licensing <laughs> You know, marriage certificate, <laughs> marriage certificate <laughs> husbands about to get married, wives, you know, school, lecturers. I really think that a psychiatric evaluation mm. is important, simple, uh, and for short. Everybody, yeah. And it's not, um, I understand the spectrum that we're talking about, talking about managing your mm. anger, conflict resolution. That's good. That's on one end. But we have a problem where if you do not diagnose something, it would take an effect. Someone who has a, you know, a, a psychiatric issue, but because of the way they carry out, you know, is masked, and the person becomes a leader somewhere, becomes a president, governor, and work has become chaotic because of a mental illness. Mm. I'm not even talking of just, you know, um, the emotions. emotions that you're trying to, I'm talking of mental illness. It's important that we do that. And then person then, even at that point, will know if they have a problem, and then they will manage it outside that, because you cannot have a mental illness and lead people. You cannot have a mental illness and organize people. Mm. It would definitely spill over. We've seen um, people who, we've read stories of people who um, gathered a lot of crowd because they seem so charismatic. But over the years, they looked at it and realized they had a mental illness. So there are some of it that it comes across as being charismatic, being able to lead people. But then they eventually lead people to their deaths, eventually lead people into tragic situations. And that is why it's so important, especially for drivers on the road. Mm. And our teachers, the teachers that teach our children. So Still discussing this matter. Yes, please. Yes, yeah, so um, the fear I have now, you know we're in Nigeria. <laughs> if after this, that's if they take the mental uh, psychiatric test and some of the candidates fail, what is going to happen? Um, I think we need to start doing things that are needed to be done early enough so that we don't lead people on and get to the end after they have expended money, you know, done all the calculations, all the lobbying to get to a particular a position and then you just, you know, throw them away. Because if anything happens now and you do the psychiatric test and some people fall out, mm. because some may likely fall out, what happens? Where do we take them to? Do we allow them to continue vying for the position? Do we allow them to take up that leadership knowing that they have failed the psychiatric test? It's not going to be easy. This is Nigeria now. It's not going to be easy. So I would have suggested that at the point where they were picking up forms. Or the law. Yes. Electoral, electoral, electoral law, law act should be amended. Yes, amended. Such that at the before point, you even pick up your yes, forms. At the, you point, already you are, at the point you are registering to say, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. they, they are running. Course. Yes, they are running the test. Yes. So that if you're not there, they will tell you, Uncle, this your test did not pass. 
step she aside. She will do a leadership course. Yes. yes. Do NLP. Yes. You know yeah. me? This, this, because no, I'm not talking about this. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Leadership courses. No, what I'm saying. No, that one is a conversation. What I'm saying. I hear you. You're very correct. That's a medical thing. A psychiatric evaluation is important. In addition to that, because we're talking about at the end of the day, the end product is a good leader. Yeah. That's what we're trying to achieve. So for you to be a good leader, aside from the psychiatric evaluation, you also need a course that tells you about leadership. Many of them, what God dropped into my mind is that I have found that a lot of us who go to school and are taught in the way we are taught, many of, only about, just this is my own figure, so, mm. maybe about 60% of us really assimilate everything, like yes. take everything in. Yeah. Maybe if they start teaching these things in a pidgin, or in, in our various languages. Where, yeah, so, pro, so coaches like you where must like translate it. these things in local languages. Don't, yeah. don't send somebody who their entire life have lived in this particular culture mm. and then go, go, I'm they, speaking they, big, big take them for big evaluation or take them for mm. leadership and you're speaking on this big grammar. Mm. Yeah, they're not getting it. No, 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 but you break it down in who they are yes. because many of us, because our coaches, our, our coaches have learnt it but they've learnt it in a different man's language yes. and they're, 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 they're teaching mm. it in a different yeah, man's language, language. but you're not, you're not getting through yeah. to the Nigerian yeah, that needs so, this information. So let me tell you my personal experience. There are people that come to me for coaching mm. and I realize that they are not fluent in English and I go to Pigeon. Mm. There was a lady I coached recently in Igbo language. Simple. We were doing Igbo back to back. So yeah. the coaches know. That's why I'm saying uh, for general us. classes, you will not have uh, people being coached in Yoruba for general. But if a governor has a coach, one on one. you will get that, that language Delivery. that suits you, that the language you, 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 you think with, yeah. mm -hmm. that's what you'll be coached in yeah. so that you assimilate and understand it. So those coaches are professionals. They know if they can speak that language, they will speak the language to you, but it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. For general classes, I don't think we'll have people coaching in Hausa. Only Hausa <laughs> people will come, mm -hmm. or Yoruba and all that. Yeah. So I think they know. Can we, can we go to the psychiatrists? Yeah. 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 Back to psychiatry. Um, people have schizophrenia. Yes. schizophrenia. Yeah. Anyhow. People have, uh, some people are sociopaths, some people are psychopaths. Yes. As in, it's, it's, they are wiring narcissists. Yes. Like, this is, it's not, it's not like they're training them. It's, in, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medical <laughs> issue. Mm. And when they are making decisions that will change your entire state, hmm. you should be aware, they should be aware of where they are on the spectrum and be using a drug to balance their chemical well-being. And if they don't know, they don't, their decisions are affecting lives. Yeah. So, this, what the psychiatrists, and I'm going back to this advice from NMA that they should be getting help because sometimes you listen to some people and you're wondering, are you in this country? Are you listening to what is going on yeah. in the town? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling the pulse of the people? Because you seem like you're in a different space. And they might be up here. Mm -hmm. And it is not mm -hmm. that they're not competent, but they're mentally not in they're this. They need, some, they need mm -hmm. to balance their hormones mm -hmm. to be able to function as, as they are wired optimally. to optimally. Mm -hmm. So... The psychiatrist um, 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 check is, yeah. is important mm. for all of us. Oh, and it's compulsory for our leaders. So it's important for all of us. Oh, but compulsory for leaders. Are, yeah. are they right? Just like you are said. You in, this, in, this, ah. in the education, mm. health sector, the yeah. labor. Are they yeah, I think that, ah, are we, labor, are thank are you. We, let me take this call. I'll come to you, Maran. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, my name is Taiwo. I'm calling from Ibato. Okay, welcome yeah, to the show. Tayo. Okay, um, on this uh, topic of um, psychiatric tests for presidential candidates and um, others, it is something that we ought to have started doing before now. Mm -hmm. And um, because um, it is a lot to govern a country, even being a father at home with mm -hmm. a couple of children, yes. is, you, you could see the madness that comes with it. <laughs> you, 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 you want to go mad in most cases. So when you have over 200 million people to govern, to lead, you, you, you rest assured that if you're not mentally stable and strong enough, you cannot succeed. Yeah. And this is why most people, even though they have good intention, they want to come and lead, you, mm. they have good plans. When they finally get there and two or three people just criticize them or push them around, mm. everything goes slow and they can't hold it together. Mm. So um, evaluating them mentally, Oh, sorry, oh, we lost that. Yeah. Mary, I'm going to say yeah, something. Yeah, so I think I've already made my point on the fact that medical evaluation is important. But then I wanted to jump on the, your conversation on leadership training and, you know, and it's important too. You know, when you started saying it, that, oh, they need to get like special leadership training, I was like, when you started saying it, I was like, no, why should someone go for a special class to learn how to be a leader? Usually by the time you get to that position, 
you should have acquired all the life experiences, educational experiences, to get you to the point where you're a leader. But now, if we look at it critically, the way that our country is going, our society, there's just so much that has gone wrong. So many values that we have thrown away, a lot of important things, character development that we do not see as important. So yes, life has changed. And now I see why it's important that you have like a particular class that would teach a group of people who think that they are ready and willing to make a difference to get that sort of training. And then when you're running for offices like that, you must have gone through that training a long time before. It should not be that, okay, now that you have been elected you or now that you're about to go for this class, it should have been that you have taken this training even as a young you person feel. and it has affected your, it has shaped you, has shaped your character and shaped you to the point that you've come here and then, then Nigeria will find you, Nigerians will find you competent to run for office. Let me take this call from Femi. Femi is calling from Abuja. Good morning, you're live. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Femi. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, please, um, I've been wanting to ask this question for uh, about uh, four weeks now. <coughs> but uh, I want to ask it now. Uh, please, I don't want to ask where is my auntie, Yemi Kuti. <laughs> Oh, she's still on. She's on vacation. Yeah, she's not around. Um, celebration um, got her tired. I mean, of course, she was. She had to rest, she she had to rest so after far. celebration. She'll be resuming soon. Thank you. So, we, I think we've all agreed that we, we need to have, um, our leaders need to. Um, yes, we, we understand towards the elections, but it's just beyond the elections. Is mm -hmm. Even for all various positions, yes. people need to be evaluated properly to be sure that they are mentally stable mm -hmm. for the work at hand. And I think somebody said it earlier, it's not easy governing Nigeria. Ah. But my question is, do you need somebody who is mentally stable? Or do you need somebody who is equally crazy? crazy? Well, like, you like, we like, yeah, do, 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 do we need yeah. that it is madness that you used to cure madness? So, 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 if you want so, to catch a monkey, you behave so, like a monkey. Do we? To <laughs> somebody, the, point, the point is that, because think about it, you bring somebody who is so righteous and this and is just very, very English speaking and speaker, ch -ch -ch -ch, comes in and governs these people. And then somebody who is just as crazy as everybody. Else. On, is that what we want? Let us, I'm just trying to understand. Mm find a different perspective to this conversation. Go ahead. So let me tell you how energy works. Mm. If you have somebody at the head who has that energy of excellence, mm. over time you see that all the people working with him or her will begin to pick up on that energy of excellence and mm. that's how it goes round. If you get a mad person, as mad as what you think we need... The madness continues. The madness, it becomes a loop. Ah. So everybody just, they mad, they go. Yeah. We're just mm. going round in circles. We were mad on the traffic. We were mad in the hospital. We were mad in the school. We are mad everywhere. And that's what we've been seeing so far. We've just been, you know, going round and round in the loop. We need a change of energy. We need a change. We need, we need um, people who have excellent spirits. I don't see that as much. Um, this African time we talk about, when you go abroad and an event is supposed to start, there's nothing like African time. If events is starting for 10... Only for non-African events, so Nigerian time, there's still events. Mm -mm, is, Nigerians talking, abroad, they still have Nigerian time. I'm not talking Nigerian about Nigerians abroad. Okay. I'm talking about... I'm using... Abroad, other, abroad, yeah, abroad. abroad, abroad. <laughs> okay. To give examples. Yeah. So if an event is supposed to start for 10, mm. by 9.30, people are seated. That's the standard. You know that if you start your event by 11, they have gone. The people that are supposed to have been uh, to do the event will go. So if we have somebody who has an excellent spirit, she is running a company now. And if she says nine and her people see her that she says nine and comes 12, that's the message we're passing. We're still going around in circles. Tomorrow you become a commissioner. Hold on. Who defines <laughs> excellent spirits? Okay, let, 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 let's excellent have it. Excellent spirits. Wait, let me pause. Mm, let me. So to an Oyibo person, excellence is I start the program at 10. If I say 10, wait, wait, 10. Yes, that's for an Oyibo person. Mm. To an African, mm. I'm understanding that in Africa we have traffic. Mm. I'm understanding that because we like to bring sister, we have to carry nanny, we have to do this, we have to do that. There are many factors. So because I am an African, I know that for my event to start at 10, mm. I will put my invite nine o'clock. It's a culture. It is the system. I know. I understand it's that my people right. are different. Mm -hmm. So I respect. Your people are not wait, different. Wait, wait. Who's defining excellence? No, no, no. 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 Who's defining? Are, your wait. Are irresponsible. No, no. You're not different. That is your definition. Because if you're going to the airport, that is your interpretation. And see, if you're going to the airport yes. or you're going to the embassy, yes. Even if you have five children, if you will take care of them. If the Yimbo understands. Go. 
That yes. because please, they, they won't understand mm. that because she's an, I'm an African person. Mm. If you say your flight is nine o'clock, mm. please, if, you, if your flight is ten o'clock, please put your flight at nine o'clock because because I'm an African. Make me yeah. no understand the one hour. But the point I'm making, get it. My point is that okay. let them adjust to our own way of life. Why are we adjusting to their own no, way of life? Our way of life is not who defined it at that. It's irresponsible. No, hold on, please. Hey, Mary, I'm sorry. Hold on. You are just irresponsible. So why don't you put your time for 12? Why put it for 10 and then come for 12? Where do you still come for? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that that's what you have that's allowed. Okay, I let me had pause. an event I was going I, to I recently. To and they put it yes. for 10. Yes. As I got there by 11, the event has finished. Okay, Next wait. time. I will go for 10. Okay, let me pause you. I come to you, Mario. Let me take this because we're not holding for a while. Emmanuel, are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah. In regard to the hot topic, yep. I, you know, Nigeria, for the past seven years plus now, we have suffered a lot. So to fix that. Oh, sugar. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, so I think, Maria, you're looking at it, dif um, you're looking at it a bit differently. You're making it about the behavior and not the reason for the behavior. Mm. The reason for why an, a character is excellent or why a character is flawed. Mm. The reason why they ask you to come on time is because time is money. Mm. If you waste time on one thing, you waste time on many other thing. things. Yeah. If you're supposed to be somewhere at seven and you waste time and you get there at eight, so many things will be pushed back and will affect many other things. If a flight was supposed to leave at eight and it leaves at 10, it will affect the flight that was supposed to have left at 10 and everything else will be affected. So uh, a, a character or behavior is not just about the character itself, the thing that we're doing itself, the but the effect and the impact that it has on people and late coming, has a negative effect on people. Begging constantly has a negative effect on your dignity and making sure that as a security operative or whatever job that you hold, that you do it without bias. You know, So those are the reasons why it's easy to define character or excellent character because it is either A or it is B. Simple. There's no gray line. So I guess that. There's so no, the, same um, principle, middle, the, the same principle we apply when we say, OK, to come to a meeting, you wear a suit. I want to wear my Ankara to my meeting. Mm -hmm. So you're, you've created a standard mm -hmm. that it has to be a suit on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I can wear my Ankara on a Monday morning because that's who I am. Yeah, so so, so is, is it's, it's, it's a styling. It's so whatever. the it's same way a... with the timing. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you as a timing, it's not about character. It's about what I believe. If it's about respecting the culture or the way people are, mm -hmm. that these people are communal. So, for example, you want to bury somebody. In my own culture, it's a communal thing. In your own culture, it's just father, mother, and the children bury their grandma. Everybody goes home, eats biscuit, and go home. No, in my own culture, we have a huge. Let me so you might see it that's as irresponsible sense. or flamboyant no, or something. No, 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 it is, it is who we are. Let me so give you an example. My point, therefore, is that mm. I hear you very clearly. It's not who we are. Don't define it as being responsible over another person's behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm saying what we're saying that who is defining what is respectable and what is not respectable. Integrity is saying something and standing by it. So mm -hmm. if I say ten, I should be there for ten. Mm -hmm. That's integrity. Integrity so is yes. Let's, or, let's, yes I mean, or no? I, I, That's integrity. Let's, let's I'll come to you after this break. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to yet. Yeah. Yes, I was going to talk okay. about the going 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 to that leadership. You know, mm -hmm. the NMA is saying that there should be um, psychiatrist tests for all our leaders. I feel like there should be leadership tests for all our leaders mm -hmm. and leadership classes for all our leaders mm -hmm. because you really don't understand what leadership is about. Mm -hmm. Many of people that go into politics are going because they want to live a better life and they have seen that other people that became politicians, their life changed for good. Children are aspiring to become politicians because they say, ah, uh, the boy that man became politician. When anybody's coming like this, they say, pim, 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 pim. They clear the road for him. I want to become a politician. And why do you want to? Because so that when I'm driving that, yeah. in traffic, they will clear road for me. So we have people that aspiring. are aspiring for leadership position without understanding the responsibilities that come with it. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I was chatting with people in my um, in my in the, during the LBS program. And I'm like. Guys, we, not, we have an ESCO group and nobody is saying anything. What do you think? You, what are you put to vote for you so that you become secretary? You think secretary is for just for you to carry title on your head? Secretary means that you must coordinate the affairs of the group. It engage means that you must them. engage, you must bring reports. So people aspire for positions so they can have a label. Governor of, yeah. vice chairman, yeah. president. They won't labor, they don't understand the responsibilities that, that it comes with it. So Absolutely. it is important that they go through a leadership program to understand what is expected of you when you get there. Mm. Who are the people looking up to you? How do you live up to the expectation? Okay, let me take this call from Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yes. Good morning, everybody. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, please I want to respond to the newspapers with you with regard to 
uh, what the Duffman or IPMA person said about the import of petroleum. Um, the IPMA or Duffman cannot force such ships down the throat of Nigeria. The sole importer of petroleum in Nigeria is NNPC. NNPC is the sole importer. No any marketer importing petroleum to Nigeria. So for somebody to say that they will go and source for dollars from black market to import oil is a lie. So please, then let us doubt that tension first. Thank you, Hassan, for your story. That wasn't the fact. I explained it that it was the cost of shipping from NNPC PLC in the mothership to the daughter ship. That cost is paid in dollars, and they need to pay for it. So NFC brings in the ship, brings in the um, petrol, yes, but it doesn't bring it into Nigeria. It is Ipman that brings it in from the mother ship into daughter ship, and that costs in thousands of dollars. Mm. That's the conversation, sir, not okay. importation. Mm. Back to Mariam, you're going to... Yes, so, you know, talking about this leadership again, um, as much as I'm beginning to agree that it should be leadership schools because of how things are, I still believe that we are trained through life. Mm. I told you that I went to a school yesterday and I was talking to the school prefects, you know, and I was asking them questions back and forth and they were talking about their responsibilities and I said to them, You're, this is preparing you for when you run for president. Mm. And I strongly believe that. You're already at this stage understanding responsibility. Yeah. I don't know if I've spoken here about my son's school where the principal insisted that when they are running for office, it should not, there used to be a time that um, parents would come Get involved. You know, we'll get involved and it make it so flamboyant. In fact, some of the things that the children would be like, if you vote for me, you can get, I got an ice cream, ice cream truck outside. If you vote for me, everybody gets ice cream. And she made it about, you go from one class to the other, tell them, you know, what you will do. Mm -hmm. And then they would decide if they wanted to vote you or not based mm -hmm. on the content of your character and what you have done. Mm -hmm. We're already teaching them leadership mm -hmm. there. So it's not about one class that's you. Because we're going to make it about that. If we make it about a class, it will be the class. Oh, I've already been there and look at my certificate. It should be about our character mm -hmm. developed over time mm -hmm. as we're growing up. So it's not only the leaders that get that training, even the followers. Mm -hmm. So that when someone comes to run for office, you will choose mm -hmm. based on the values that you have also mm -hmm. learned. This person that wants to come, oh, just wants a title. But this person has has the same experience. He understands these values, mm -hmm. understands character building. And so that's the person I will I will vote for. So it's not only about the right. leaders, also the followers. Let me take this call from Judith from Holden. Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Mariah. You're live. Go ahead, please. All right, please. Uh, it's on the previous topic of extortion. Okay. It's your view. Let now, it the count. woman Go that ahead. called and she said you should um, start teaching self esteem, you should include it in schools. So I want to correct it. It's Go already ahead. there in the scheme of work. Yeah. Oh. Self-esteem is there. I agree with you. Yes. I, I didn't mention that yet. But so I was, I was going to say that the point, I, I agree with everybody, what everybody has said. But I insist on the fact that the way these learnings, these educational, these courses are being communicated is not getting through. Mm. We're talking about the Yalojas. We're talking about people who are talking to the locals, people who are talking to the Agberos, because it's from that level. Mm. That mm. you are growing up and becoming local government chairman, becoming Senate president, you are now becoming president. If you are talking to the grassroots, mm. communicate to them yeah, in the language great. they understand. And many of these English courses of leadership, of, um, of mental health, of, they don't get it. Yeah. They just take the certificate and say, yes, I did the course. Yeah. But they have no clue what you said. Yeah, I agree with so you. So we need to change the manner. So many of you carry your uh, tie, say, I'm a coach, I'm a coach. Please. Change your coaching to local language. Yes, Change am. your coaching to yes, the sure PG. Yeah. So, but we need more of those yes, to, do to communicate. So, Even though those who pretend to be educated, half of them don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> they don't. They only I pretend know. because it's nice to, the, the idea of saying, I'm a coach, yeah. but they don't get half yeah. the thing they've been taught. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, I went for an ARAS event recently, yes. and we were speaking English. I, I moderated a session. And when it came to my turn, I was reading the room as the, my, I will ask you a question as you're responding, I'm reading the room, I'm looking at faces. I just un, understood that um, there were people, the people we wanted to reach mm. were not yes. getting it. Mm. So the second session, so I allowed them to speak the first English, so it won't look like I don't know how to speak small English. Mm. <laughs> the second um, question, session, yeah. I broke it down to pigeon, mm. and I could read 
Everybody lit up. Like yes, their faces lit up. They were they felt like they belonged. There was a part of them, yeah. you know, that you know, every the energy just changed. And I made sure that every speaker spoke pigeon. Mm -hmm. We cut those ones that did not grow up in um, you know the slums and all mm -hmm. that. But everybody tried to communicate in pigeon and the response was massive. Yeah. So I think um, like you said, I, I'm an advocate of pidgin English. I always say it anywhere. I think it should be a lingua franca for us. I think all this English we speak, because most of us, our mother, we don't think in English. We don't think, and that's why sometimes we make mistakes when we are speaking that English, because you are translating in your local language mm. and trying to express in mm, English yeah. language. Even when our leaders are talking, they're making comments. Yeah. They're saying in Yoruba. Yes. By the time you translate in English, it's so, it's so, it, it doesn't make, make sense. Different. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take uh, this call from Itunu. It's coming from Imo State. Good morning, Itunu. Yeah, so no good morning. Uh, you guys are, <laughs> yeah, you guys are really doing a good job. I'm Thank you. Thank guys. you. Uh, long time. Yeah, I'm uh, still on the top of subject matter. Uh, it, it is at the point this time in this country where we just have to get things right. If we want to get things right, we have to get it right. And that's be from all sectors. Starting from the educational sector, if we want to get things right, I believe or I think that ethics and leadership should be taught. Yes, yeah, it, yeah, it should be taught mm -hmm. so that everybody knows what they are bound for. So that when they are leaving the institution, the academic institution to the world, mm -hmm. they know how things should be. Mm -hmm. And when they see when the way people do it the other round, they know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with respect to uh, what you guys talked about the other time, um, I believe every leader in Nigeria shouldn't just come up from anywhere. There should be a parameter for leadership. If it's going to be held, check, and everything that needs to be done, it should be done right from the inception before they go. Thank you very much, you know. There's something I would say when I come to talk with. You see, I think, I'm not sure it was Maram that said earlier, these people advocating that, oh, self esteem should be in our courses, uh, leadership, it, it goes back to this issue of us transferring responsibility. Mm. Uh, I have worked a bit in the educational sector, and sometimes when I see the curriculum of a child, everybody has an idea. Put self-esteem, put confidence, put this. They keep bombarding these mm. children with mm. stuff. But see, this, little, this, this, this little child has so many things to read on. Mm. I'm thinking, it's just a child. Mm. So the real responsibility is from parenting. Yes. You learn it from home, from the character, how you relate with your children. Yeah. From, you are the real teachers. Yes. If you pass it to the teachers, let them put it in the curriculum. Mm. You are transferring responsibility. Mm. It's an easy thing to say. I want to have it's, beyond, to, class. it's beyond class. Mm. Yeah, it's beyond the class. daily the, the, the daily activities no, we do. Me. How you, you go to me. the gas station, how you mm. inside your car, you. how you drive. Mm. That is the education your child needs. Not saying like, school, put it in the curriculum. Because you are transferring responsibility to somebody else. And then get a certificate. So um, I was going to mention that a lot of things happen within the party system that should organically weed out wrong leadership, you know. And one of the things that my church always teaches about leadership is you don't become a leader in my church without first leading a small group. So everybody does the course, then you start as a cell leader. No pastor in my church was not first a cell leader, mm. sexual leader, and area coordinator. You mm. cannot, you cannot be called in the church and you did not grow through the ranks. Right. That was a system to ensure that you are able to deploy skills like relationship management, conflict yeah. resolution, decision yeah. making, yeah. critical thinking. You are able to deploy those skills at different levels before mm. growing up. Nobody should come up and say, I want to become the president when you have not had grassroots levels. Uh, levels to deploy those skills. And at those points, people should be able to see that this person has the traits of leadership. This person doesn't have the traits of leadership. Leadership, a few leaders are born, but most leaders are made. So it's about you learning through your journey how to become this person, mm -hmm. taking responsibility. So when, we, when we dial it back to internal politics, we see what's happening in PDP. It's leadership, oh, <laughs> a whole party. Scatter, scatter. Everything, they can't resolve conflicts. People have split, they've split the groups. We are seeing our politicians jumping from party to party and we're asking why they are, not, they are leaders. Mm. How can you be a leader but you cannot find, make consensus happen within your party? You jump and you jump and you jump. There are many things that, it's like saying somebody has held your throat in, as a single person. Mm. You are now asking if he will beat you in marriage. Mm, I don't understand. Already. We already have pointers within mm. our politicians that they are not leaders. They are just trying to get into office. Mm. And we should be wise enough to spot the difference between leaders and those that are just trying to get a position. Mm. So let me just add this, because we always expect that, um, you know, as an adult, all your life you have been wired in a particular way. And then you do one course and everything you automatically is supposed to change. <laughs> That's fallacy. Mm. So we need to understand that the subconscious mind 
learns through repetition. Mm. And that's why it's not just this class. So since we're starting with children now, as they get home, they should see that same example with the parents. They should see that example outside. Because what we see is we go for all of these courses. We come back in two weeks. We are talking about it. We are practicing. After the third week, the market woman don't do you. The <laughs> bus driver don't do you. Your colleague don't do you. You have forgotten everything you have exactly. learned. So this should be an ongoing refresher course, refresher course over and over, and ongoing practice. There should be like um, a test to show that you are practicing what you're learning regularly. And over time, it becomes a part right. of you. Okay, and now reiterate, thought. it's not about courses, it's not about classes. Mm. It's about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's about the way we deal with each other. Confidence cannot be taught only on the pages of a book. Yeah. It will be taught by watching you and watching me. Being polite yeah. cannot be taught by reading what politeness means from the dictionary. It's the way that practice. you and I engage. So a lot of the things that we want to push on books or courses or, you know, um, buildings, we have to do it in real life with mm. each other. Yeah. And I think as yes. I would like to wrap up with saying that the Electoral Act must be, or we should ensure that before candidates pick up their forms at all, what, what have you been able to, have you had a proper psychiatric evaluation from a reputable hospital? Can we actually verify that you're mentally fit for the mm. job? It's extremely important because mm. Nigeria is a huge deal. And for you to become a leader in any capacity, you must be mentally stable and optimal at your work.